All right. Well, we spent the last video uh, preparing the feathers that we're going to use on this headdress. Uh, as I said, uh, this headdress was crafted by me a long time ago uh, at a different time for a very different purpose. But uh, I need a new uh, headdress. I need something to cover up my head that I can attach the woodland roach to because I don't have enough hair on the back of my head anymore to make a braid to attach the roach directly to my skull. Um, by way of note, I hope in the future to uh, acquire a wolf face and make yet another headdress. Uh, and uh, so uh, we're going to repurpose the headdress now and uh, attach the feathers that we made yesterday see how this goes. All right, so uh, this is a full coyote pelt that uh, I think my wife got for me a long, long time ago, and I turned it into a, a headdress. And uh, what we're going to do first is take off some of the things that are on the headdress. Uh, these conch ermine tail combos uh, are really more of a plain style sort of thing. They don't really belong on a Eastern Woodlands headdress to the best of my knowledge, so we're going to go ahead and take them off. Use the X-Acto knife. And that's why they call it an X-Acto knife, because it does exactly what you want it to. glued in place. We'll have to put some effort into removing them, I guess. But they should just pull through. Like so. And we'll do the same on the other side. For what it's worth, uh, <laughs> which isn't a whole lot. Um, this was originally a chief's headdress. I won't elaborate on what that means or uh, why I was wearing it. If you know my personal history, um, you might know why. Uh, at any rate. Okay, so we took the conch shells off. Uh, we're going to leave all the beadwork in place, regardless of how appropriate and authentic it is. Uh, we're going to take the imitation hawk feathers off. And they seem to be attached at the back of the... Well, I need to cut the, the skin loose anyway for what else we're going to do. So I think this is where the feathers are tied. If it's not, it's part of what secures the coyote head or coyote skin to the crown piece that I have underneath, which is, again, or, you know, <laughs> just for reference sake, is uh, a crown piece for a plain style headdress, war bonnet. Uh, but it serves my purpose here. Um, alternatively, you could use ball cap. I've seen people do that. Yep, that was that. Okay, so we got the faux the faux feathers off. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's coyote fur. Let's not pull that out. It's the coyote himself. Right, I may be able to do what I want to do without detaching these other two. It doesn't look like it though. Alright, well, let's go ahead and clip those off so I've got full access to the, the crown piece so I can get the uh, thing set up for the woodland roach. And then we'll reattach these and I guess do the tighten up on them. Uh, they look like they were loosening anyway. You know how it is. Things age. Okay. And all right, so we've got the coyote and the headdress undressed, <laughs> uh, and we're ready to start putting things back together again. So, 
uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a loop that comes up through both the crown piece and the coyote uh, hide uh, to attach the, the roach to and it's going to be about right here uh, and so we're going to make an incision in the, the coyote and I think I'm probably going to make two incisions in the uh, crown piece to bring a loop of this thong up through the, the coyote. And we have our our cut in the in the coyote. Uh, find it again. That one right there. Poke the thong up through the, the coyote fur by pointing out those pliers and see if I can persuade the thong to go where I want it to. So you still have to negotiate the, the fur itself. Loop up through the through the hide and so we bring the loop up through the hide and we're going to trial attach the roach. Uh, the loop comes up through the various pieces pieces of the roach, which incidentally these two are supposed to be glued together, but the glue has come unstuck, so once again we're holding out for that hide glue uh, but if you put the pin in it all ha gets held together so it doesn't matter okay so here's the, the uh, deer rib roach pin that we made yesterday with the feathers attached uh, and that goes through the loop and then we're going to pull it taut underneath on the fur and knot it off. that would be the case. You know, obviously this needs to be quite quite tight to hold everything in place and not fall off your headdress, which is the last thing you want to have happen. It's, it's probably taut enough. I don't I don't see that shaking loose. That looks like it's gonna hold in place pretty well. question of course is whether the loop will stay visible enough for me to be able to find it when I want it. <laughs> That's always an issue. Uh, but yeah, we've, uh, we've got it pretty tight. So, so uh, now we're going to, I guess, re-secure the, uh, the coyote hide to the crown piece and uh, use the uh, other set of feathers that we made yesterday. These are the set of feathers that we made for the, um, the, the roach pin uh, with the, the deer rib. And uh, so we've used those. 
Now we're going to uh, use the other set of feathers and secure them to uh, the back of the uh, headpiece um, right here uh, while we reattach the uh, coyote hide. Okay, well it looks like uh, time actually <laughs> kind of opened up the uh, holes that uh, the old artificial sinew had gone through to the point that we probably can uh, almost bring the um, feathers, the, the thongs for the feathers, right through the same holes. Uh, we'll just open them up just ever so slightly more in the hide and the crown piece, and uh, we'll just attach the feathers that way. Same as we did um, up here with the thong for uh, attaching the uh, roach pin. So. Uh, poke the poke the thong through the. I have to figure out how I can find these holes in the coyote fur. said, these pointy nose pliers are very, very handy for lots and lots of things, and this is one of them. Uh, I'm sort of improvising as I go, but it, it seems to be working. Alright, so we got that one. Now we gotta find the other hole. Get down through all the coyote fur. Spread the nose of the pliers ever so slightly. Get the, the thong in the pliers. And pull it through. Excellent. I'm pulling some coyote fur with it. But poor coyote's dead. He, he won't notice. It'll be alright. And uh, that should pretty well secure the feathers to the back of the hide again. And we'll do the same thing that we did uh, with the, the tie-off for the roach piece. We'll go ahead and uh, just make ourselves a dandy little square knot here. Uh, once again, <laughs> when the hide glue gets here, uh, we'll probably secure the knot with hide glue. that so much. I think I'm going to do the same with the, the other holes. Uh, rather than go back to using the artificial sinew, I think I'll secure it with uh, some more buckskin thong. Uh, but I like it. It looks good. Uh, the turkey was uh, considered sacred by the Eastern Woodlands uh, tribes and so uh, turkey feathers are very appropriate for uh, this, this headdress or for the woodlands regalia and that was part of the reason why I chose them. Um, the fact that they came from the backyard of a friend uh, also has some influence over things that I choose to use in my crafting that gives it a certain more personal value uh, but uh, that's how we're going to do that and uh, I'll just finish securing the uh, the hide to the crown piece, and I uh, have done the other uh, piece over here. I like I like this idea of using buckskin thong instead of sinew. No particular reason, I just do. Uh, so we're going to finish the project uh, by attaching the, the other side of the crown piece back to the coyote hide. widening the needle hole that the sinew went through to be able to receive the, uh, the, the buckskin thong. And we're using our 
pointing those pliers to insert the thong through both surfaces, it just makes things easier. These pointy nose pliers are readily available at Joann's or Michael's or through Crazy Crow or any number of places. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, I believe this came with an uh, electronic tool set that I got many years ago when I was doing radio and TV repair. Uh, and I just, they're great tools. <laughs> the thong up through the coyote fur and then run it back through both pieces and tie it off underneath. Find the correct hole. Bring the thong through. And back through the, the crown piece. Tie it off with a nice little square knot. The headdress sits fairly loosely on my head, so I'm not real worried about uh, it you know, causing discomfort uh, having these things resting up against my scalp. And it's buckskin, which is pretty soft. And so I'm, not, I'm thinking that you know, everything will be just fine. But this is a nice touch. I, I, I like this. Trim the ends off. Like I said when I when my hide glue arrives a little later this week, uh, I'll probably glue the knots just for safety's sake. And that takes care of that. And we've got our, our loop in here for our uh, roach. Uh, so let me go ahead and put the roach back on here and uh, we'll look at the finished product. And uh, Okay, so some further imp improvisation was necessary. Um, it turned out that the uh, loop that I brought up to hold the roach pin in place really wasn't tight enough for my liking. Uh, so I uh, added some things to make it a little bit tighter. Uh, and uh, now I'm satisfied that uh, I can dance all day and not have uh, have to worry about my feathers coming loose. Uh, so uh, we've got this is the finished headdress. We've got the woodland roach in place with the roach pin in place. Uh, turkey feathers, turkey feathers on the back, secured to the, the coyote hide. The coyote hide is now resecured to the crown piece, and uh, we're ready to try it out in a circle, try it out in a circle next weekend. Uh, so that's, that's the project, repurposing an old uh, chief's headdress, if you will, uh, to be a uh, reasonable uh, headdress for me to use, uh, to keep my head covered and have my roach. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you a little further down the road.